Okay, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Halsten Brøtan, and I work as a .NET consultant for Novanet in Oslo. So during uh, 2019, I was part of a two-man team working for NRK, the national broadcaster in Norway, building an API to election results to TV, web, and more. The election was the most important project for NRK during 2019, and it was absolutely crucial that everything worked as planned. So I'll give you some insights on how we approach this task with an absolute deadline and inescapable performance demands and how we flawlessly coped with one of the highest peak traffic loads in Norway during 2019. So uh, NRK wants uh, ownership of the election. It's very important for them. So they want people to think about NRK when they think about uh, the election. And the way it works is that the, the government uh, registers votes and exposes this uh, through an API uh, to the different media vendors, which uh, enrich, en enriches them and exposes them to the public. So our job was to create an API for the different uh, TV channels uh, for NRK, the website, and uh, this uh, app uh, made by journalists. And the reason why they wanted uh, an API is to have uh, one source of uh, data for consistency. So uh, besides the obvious uh, requirements of uh, correctness and security, avoid Russian hackers and all that, there was a couple of uh, absolute requirements. First of all, the deadline. Uh, we started uh, in January and uh, uh, the result must be made available on the 9th of September. The election will not be post postponed because this developer didn't finish his API. Also, uh, the results must be made available precisely at 9 p.m. When I started working uh, at Anarko and uh, had my morning coffee and uh, with other workers, uh, and I told them what I was working on, they always said, oh, be sure that you don't show the results before 9. And I thought that was a bit strange, but then I learned that some years ago, Anarko, well, they didn't really show the results, but they kind of insinuated on uh, which direction the election was going. And that uh, resulted in a hefty fine. And more importantly, uh, showing the results before nine uh, is grounds for a re And uh, you don't want to be personally responsible for a re-election. At least I don't. Also for TV, uh, the, there's a lot of live uh, broadcasts showing a lot of graphics based on the data from the API. So there should be no perceived delays. So all of this uh, was a bit frightening, uh, you know, a huge potential for disaster. <laughs> you get one shot to deliver and you don't want to end up in the newspapers uh, like this. And then Norwegians will uh, recognize this as this big uh, government IT project that had a bug concerning the tax return. And uh, it's not a coincidence that I'm showing this because I worked on this project at this time. So I don't want that to happen again. So uh, we started out <clears throat> and uh, there was already an API made for the elections in 2017. But this one was built on the .NET uh, full framework. And uh, there was a desire to move everything to Kubernetes, which required .NET Core. Also, the performance was not really according to the requirements, uh, especially for TV. When we started poking around uh, in this solution, we also found that uh, uh, many of the repositories and solutions were named after Metallica songs which was a bit fun, but also a bit confusing. So we, we started trying to figure out why the old API uh, was a bit slow and how we could improve it. We, we started by just calling the different API endpoints using Postman. And then we wrote a lot of integration tests to make sure we didn't break any functionality. We changed the ORM from simple data to Dapper, which, which made, made a huge impact. And we, we added the proper database indexing. Uh, by doing all this work, uh, we found uh, actually a, a feature slash bug in the .NET Core memory cache, which I don't have time to elaborate on right now, but you can read about it on the, the Nolanet blog. So we did all this work and now the API worked pretty well actually, uh, but we had only reached February. So we had uh, quite a bit of time left. So then we were given a, a carte blanche to start from scratch with a .NET Core API. Uh, and we were also given uh, a requirement of cloud redundancy in case of uh, Azure not being in the mood on the election night. 
So the way we kind of started with this was to think we have to optimize this for the fastest possible data retrieval. So we thought of the government API as the master of the data, and we were just storing the read models. So no dependencies between tables. And we have this most important method uh, is selecting or retrieving uh, results for, uh, for an election district. And there are uh, under 2000 election districts. So we, uh, we structured that as a key value based storage. So each uh, election district were given a unique key, as you can see here, and the results stored as a JSON blob. So we used SQL Server because we, we needed some relational data as well. And we stored the key as a clustered index because we were only going to update it and, and look it up. Also, we had a lot of uh, static data, uh, party names, party members, uh, election districts and stuff. And we needed to enrich the result with these data. Now, what we found is that the link was just too slow for this. So we had to cache the static data using dictionaries. Also, our API was not supposed to, to have any, any memory caching, but we added the burst cache for one second just to handle peaks. And we used Akamai as a CDN cache for the website. We also used this .NET Core uh, Ninja trick, uh, setting the minimum worker threads to 100 instead of four, which is the default in .NET Core, and that uh, boosted the performance. We did also a lot of performance testing, and we were supposed to use Akamai, but it's uh, very expensive, so we ended up using K6, and that is a brilliant tool. Uh, you can just write your tests using JavaScript and hammer your API from all, all directions. And uh, there was a lightning talk yesterday by Lars Jakobsen, if you want to check out K6 in more details. So this is uh, the architecture we ended up with, and I'm not going to go into details here. Uh, but the, the key point is that it's, it's pretty simple, right? It's simple and it's clean. And I think... Uh, <laughs> If you if you manage to kind of narrow it down, uh, it will also provide uh, a more faster solution. <clears throat> so election night, and uh, obviously the the mood was kind of nervous. Uh, it's kind of weird. Uh, you work on something for nine months, and you, then you go to production, and it, it's only relevant for a, a day or two, and then people. Uh, yeah, they know the results and uh, it's, they don't care anymore. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so we were kind of nervous and we had this experienced developer. I remember he came visiting earlier that day and he asked me if I was nervous. So uh, yeah, I, I said yes and I was expecting some, some comforting words and he just answered, yeah, I would be too. And he turned, ar turned around and, and left. <laughs> uh, so... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, the way we handled uh, that the results were supposed to be uh, displayed exactly at nine, uh, we did this manually. So we had this guy sitting in a war room with a button, <laughs> and he had really had one job, just push this button at nine, because we couldn't rely on, uh, on server clocks and all that. Uh, but everything worked uh, as a charm. Um, the biggest uh, media site in Norway, vg.no, it actually broke down right after nine because of the, the traffic load. Uh, so you got just got a 503 service unavailable if you went to vegi.no. And all those users were uh, visiting uh, NICO instead. So uh, we had uh, quite a lot of traffic. The first hours we had about 2 million requests that, uh, wasn't, uh, that went straight to the API and not stopped by Akamai. And the average response time for those requests uh, was 13.6 milliseconds, which is really great. We had no errors in the logs, and uh, the DB seemed to be on holiday. So that was cool. I'm just going to show one graph, because I think uh, it's, uh, it's very nice. Uh, the top one shows the server requests from 9, uh, which is increasing and then kind of stabilizing. And the bottom one shows the server response time. So what you can see here, which, which is interesting, is that the server request goes up, but the server response goes down. That means that uh, uh, 
the system is kind of warming up, SQL Server is starting to cache the queries and all that. And that is a symptom of a good working solution. So just to finish on a high note, after the election uh, was done, we had a couple of weeks left. Uh, .NET Core 3.0 was released at this time. We had a good setup for performance testing, so we spent a day on refactoring to .NET Core 3 to measure the performance differences with .NET Core 2.2. And uh, the, the difference was kind of amazing. I think we almost doubled the, the throughput. So in the heat of the moment, I, I tweeted and I mentioned uh, David Fowler, and he almost instantly uh, replied with uh, this Usain Bolt uh, clip where, where Bolt is doing his thing. And it uh, went some semi, semi well, I got over 100 views on this one. So that was pretty cool. So that's me. Thanks for listening. Have a good one.